And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for the day. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing here at home, stuff to improve my life, fix stuff around the house, maybe sell for money, or just generally show off and have a good time. If you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So several things going on today. Let's get right into it. Let's go outside. A little change of pace. Ooh, I'm not a day creature. Oh, that's better. All right, and so if you saw my short that I put out probably a few weeks ago at this point, you saw that I made a little short about boring 3D prints. These are little Trex brackets. If you didn't see the short, I'm working on my deck here. I'm adding in some railings all around the deck so the dogs have a better place to, uh, to lay in the sun. And for anybody giving me guff about banking episodes because I bank episodes out so far, this is exactly why I bank episodes because I went to do this project and found that a good portion of my deck was rotted out. I don't know why they put in flat boards right there. It's just water's gonna stand there and rot the boards out. But a two, three day project turned into a week long project. And if I would have been doing that, I wouldn't have been able to upload episodes. That's why I bank episodes because things like that pop up. Anyway, these here kits, they sell at Lowe's and they're like a hundred and something dollars a piece. And they come with these little brackets here. You can see got right there. These hold the railings on the top and on the bottom here. Each kit six feet and it comes with four brackets. But I have lots of little sections here in the gate where it's shorter. And so I'm not gonna use a new kit for every single little one foot section. And so that means I would have to get more brackets. These brackets for a four extra brackets from Trex are $20, that's way too much. So I 3D, 3D printed these out of the nylon carbon fiber from Polymaker, the Fiberon. If you wanna get some, link in the description below. Last time I used this, it was on the uh, testing the shelf brackets, the ones I did with the tractor, you know, doing the stress test. Printed these out and I've got all the deck done and I'm ready to start putting these railings in. But I did wanna test these out and stress test them to see if they're gonna be able to take the force. And so for that, let me turn off that fan, it's a little loud. And so for that, I'm gonna be doing just a very simple test here. I'm just gonna drill these straight into a piece of wood. So this is three wall loops, 25% infill. Probably should have done them at 100, but that was the setting that was in the slicer and when I printed it and I'm like, oh, well, let's see if it works. So I have not done this previously, but I wanna see if it's gonna be able to hold up. Now when the brackets, when the railing's sitting on these, it's sitting like this, you know, the, there's no real stress on the bracket because the weight of the rail is really, you know, it's the screw that's holding the weight. And the screw is just kind of, the bracket's just kind of holding the screw in place. So really the material between the screw and where the railing sits is getting compressive strength. It's not like, you know, shearing or um, pulling or whatever. I'm not too worried about it. I think these are gonna be fine, but I did want to find out how much they can handle. I don't know if I wanna send a three inch screw into a four by four, cause that's gonna, that's gonna take my battery down. Do I have something shorter? Oh my God. Always such a Herculean task to find anything in around here. When I do projects, I just make a huge mess and then I clean up everything at once. I don't clean up as I go. All right. Nylon carbon fiber, Fibron is PA612 CF15, if I recall correctly. We're just gonna send this thing straight in until it explodes. All right, you ready, camera guy? So it's gonna be mounted in like so. Actually, you know, it's not gonna be, this is gonna be the real stressor right here. All right, let's go. Damn, I mean, I didn't anneal this or anything. That's as tight as I'm gonna do it. But we wanna find out how far we can take it. Okay, damn. That is, I mean, it's just, get in close there, camera guy. It just keeps sending it deeper. There's no cracking or buckling or anything. You know, maybe we just got a fluke. Let's try it on a, Another sec, I'm never gonna get this thing out. I only have one of these screws. All right, so this is the section that will be going into the railing. Let's see if it performs the same. I mean, it just compresses it into nothing until. So I'm counting that as a major win. 20 bucks a P for 20 bucks for four extra of those. I've got several section. I went ahead and printed, I think 24, 16 or 24 
On the Flash Forge 85M Pro sealed chamber, I dried that filament out for days and days and days. I didn't dry it out at like 80C. I dried it out at like 50C, which it's, you're supposed to dry it out higher. Uh, but I just dried it out for longer and put a shitload of desiccant in there. So it seems to be all right. When I was watching it print, it seemed to be doing okay. So that's a major win. So what's going on with this thing? Roll some B-roll. So you can see I got the Luke's Lab tool head all assembled. Looks pretty gnarly, but I've got a bad feeling, not a bad feeling about this, but I've got a bad feeling about the progression of this. I was hoping to get this like slap done within reason. Uh, it seems like I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board on several things. Roll what happened yesterday. All right, beloved. Got everything wired up, got everything connected. Uh, pretty sure I got everything connected. Tested the continuity on my CAN H and L uh, to make sure that the wires, you know, going in to here uh, actually corresponded to the wire that was going into the Kraken. Didn't know I had to put a jumper on the uh, resistor termination thing. A lot of this is really Greek to me, and a lot of it uh, I'm kind of bypassing without learning the theory behind it. Uh, although I'm sure I'll get the theory eventually. Um, but... Uh, everything's connected, bypassing you know, like e-stop switch, antenna, stuff like that. Uh, and chat GPT is telling me I'm at the point of where it's like, all right, now you need to test it with whatnot. So that means turning on the power. So this is the, uh, this is the, let me just make sure that chat wants me to turn on the power. Uh, highlight the full line for the Kraken device. All right, I got to SHH into this thing. Watch this thing. If it catches on fire, let me know, okay? So I got the Giga on and I'm doing all the configuration, but I'm running a uh, Big Tree Tech Kraken as my main like to, uh, you know a board on the machine. But the tool board on the print head is the stock ZNP board. It's a Raspberry Pi 2 based board. That's the chip on there. It seems like an EBB42 would be a much better board, and I have one. The only problem is, is it does not fit on this print head and it doesn't seem like it's gonna be very easy. So I'm gonna reach out to Luke's lab and see if I can like play the YouTuber card like as much as I can. Oh, I got 12,000 subscribers. I'm like, I'm not really big enough to like, you know, throw a weight around or anything, but you know, if they could machine and make a new bracket that would fit the EBB42, I would be also eternally grateful. And I did just pay like a thousand bucks for this thing. And I can't imagine a lot of, be I'm not, I'm not gonna say that, but, an EBB42 would make things run so much better because all the configuration that I've been going through, especially today, many, many hours today, I've loaded Catapult onto the Kraken as the bootloader or as, at the, as the flashing utility so I can get Clipper on there. I was having tons of issues getting it on there just, but I did get it on there, but when it came to loading a uh, Clipper or flashing Clipper onto the tool board, uh, this is obviously isn't one of the examples you can pull from. And further to that, boot button to put it into uh, DFU mode to be able to flash it is built in such a way, it's, it's modded into this print head, you can't get to it. You have to take it off, take off parts, press the button while it's all connected, then go do your flashing, then put it all back together, and I don't have any idea. I imagine that uh, Joel, or 3D Print Nerd, or anybody else that has done the Blue Storm Terra uh, conversion has just done it with the stock Elegoo board and nothing else. I'm looking in discords. If you know anything about that, let me know in the comments below if you've done this. Um, you know, again, again, this episode will come out weeks from now. So hopefully I'll have it resolved by then. Um, but it's kind of a bummer. I was hoping to get this thing at least moving around. Uh, but otherwise, we're in a pause mode with the Orange Storm Giga. Again, just to illustrate, you're not gonna be able to see anything, but just to illustrate what I'm talking about, this is the tool board here, the, uh, the Elegoo stock tool board. The boot button, the reset, the button you have to press to be able to flash the firmware is down inside of there. I mean, maybe I could get to it. And I'd much rather set this thing up from the beginning in a good way with like, an, uh, you know, a, a more common uh, board versus the specialized board that they have on here. Otherwise, everything else is, you know, seems to be communicating correctly over CAN bus. It's just, you know, I kind of figured this would happen. Like I would get to various points of, uh, you know, problems. 
And it's like, I don't, this isn't, this isn't a Centauri Carbon. This isn't a Voron. You know, this is a highly specialized machine. I guess if I could treat it like a Voron, uh, but you know, it, it's, there's so many specialized parts, you know, I'd like to think that someone else has done this that I can pull from their knowledge base, but I'm learning a lot. I'm very grateful for it, the experience. I just feel a lot of pressure to get it up and operating to you know, like showcase to you guys. All right, and so the last thing I wanted to work on, and I gotta do it quick because dinner's almost here and it's, and we, you think after 10 years, Willow Dog would understand to not bark at the sound of my voice. All right, and so for this last part, I figured we'd do something fun today. I'm working on a short uh, for the Princess Peach biker thing. All the parts are printed, they look pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna clean them up a little bit and assemble the thing and try to film the short and also film for the vlog at the same time. How am I gonna film this? You got my good camera. Well, let's just look at the parts. As I was sh showing off last time, we got the various parts for uh, Peach's body. You know, I was kind of showing that, you know, I was like, wow, wow. Motorcycle came out and the motorcycle looks actually pretty good. I gotta clean it up a little bit more, uh, but you got the big, you know, uh, back swing arm section here, fits right in. Mushroom logo came out pretty good. This model is very well designed for FDM, for, for sure. I just need to clean up some of the rough areas, but you know, you got the, the front forks here, how they fit in. So my biggest question to you, dear viewer, and this, this will come out before you even see this, but with shorts and TikToks, you're allowed to use like copyright music, uh, you know, music that you otherwise, if I put it in this video, I would get demonetized. But shorts is like, has a diff different rules. And so I can get away with using like popular music. So I'm trying to think, you know, I'm a millennial. What uh, music sort of signifies sport bikes? I was thinking Lil Boosie uh, featuring Young Jock uh, Zoom, or you got Lil Wayne and Birdman stunting like my daddy. Those are the only real songs I think about when I think about sport bikes. You know, we're gonna go for it. I don't know that I can get away with doing this without actually a <laughs> Assembling it. I try to pretend like, you know, yeah, I don't care about this. This is just kind of like a stupid print that I'm doing. It's sick. Okay, before I break this goddamn thing. Anyway, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pause on that idea until I get some tikka marsala in my gullet. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and film that short. So check my shorts feed for, to see how this came out and to see which song I ultimately went with. Maybe it was Zoom, maybe it was Stunting Like My Daddy. I don't know, you'll have to find out. <laughs> That's what I'm working on in 3D print land for today. Let me know what you think about any or all of these projects. Is it, are you, are you here for a sexy Princess Peach on a motorbike? Are you here for Trex brackets? Because there's kind of a big delta between those two things and I hope to be everything in between are you interested in the Orange Storm Giga at all? D Matt, shut up about the Orange Storm Giga. I don't care. Once it's running, sure, you could say something about it. I don't care about your problems along the way. I don't care about watching it. Just let me know what you think about any or all of these things in the comments below. Regardless, very grateful uh, for you watching and hanging out with me on this day. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Titan Coles. See you next time.